Oh, hey, Retro Combs here. In a previous uh, live stream, I tried to convert a C128 program to the Mega 65. Well, I finally did it. It is complete. And in this video, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of that conversion. Along the way, we're gonna learn a lot about the Mega 65, so stay tuned. As I mentioned in a past live stream, not currently available to view by the way, I tried to convert a basic program from the Commodore 128 Programmer's Reference Guide to use on the Mega 65. What I thought would be a line by line conversion kind of caught me off guard as I found there were significant differences between Commodore Basic version 7 and Commodore Basic 10, which was the to be released version of Basic for the C. 65 that unreleased Commodore computer in the 1990s that the now Mega 65 is based upon. So during the live stream, folks were trying to help me out, but we quickly found that trying to convert this program while distracted, me being distracted, was not a productive environment and it really wasn't something you wanted to watch either. In order to convert the program, I needed to spend time in the Mega 65 book. What I found were many command changes between these versions of BASIC when addressing graphic screens, a feature of the submarine tracking system program. After about an hour and a whole lot of trial and error, I had the conversion of the BASIC program from version 7 to 10 complete. In this video, I will explain the differences between the Commodore 128 version, the Mega 65 version, and then show you my high res version that's a conversion from the Mega 65 version. That's a conversion of the C128 to high res on the Mega 65. Confused yet? You won't be. By the way, before we begin, remember that you can support the blog and this YouTube channel. You can now support me via Buy Me a Coffee with a one time activity or become a full member using my fun Commodore inspired membership levels. When you support the channel, you get additional content and fun extras. And a huge thank you to these folks who are my new producers. Thank you so much for your support of joining my YouTube channel at the Commodore 128 level or higher. Also, before we begin, remember there is a companion blog post for this video that has all the links and all the additional information you need. The link to that companion blog post is down there in the video description below. One of the things I wanted to do with the Commodore 128 was some programming. And while I was perusing the C128 Programmer's Reference Guide for interesting tips and tricks to use in basic programming, I came across this program. It caught my eye and it was on page 116. It was called the Submarine Tracking System. So instead of firing up my C128, I was on my Mac laptop and decided to use Vice. So I fired up the C128 Vice emulator on my Mac and typed in the program. Typing in 23 lines of basic brought back some great memories and was quite fun on Vice on my Mac. So what does that code look like? Now, as you can see here, this is the basic program from page 116 of the Commodore 128 Programmer's Reference Manual, the Submarine Tracking System. Now I'll cover these lines of code when I compare them to the version for the Mega 65 I converted. So what does this program do? Let's take a look. So that's pretty cool. And again, what I want to do now is take that output, take that code, modify it so that we can put it on the Mega 65. The Mega 65 uses basic version 10. And on top of that, it's an enhanced version of basic 10 that is being enhanced by the Mega 65 developers. And it is a continuation of the roadmap from the original basic 10, which makes this very interesting. But before we do that conversion, I think we should take some time to look at a quick roadmap or timeline of Commodore Basic. So based on Wikipedia's entry, Commodore Basic, known as Pet Basic or CBM or Commodore Business Machines Basic, is the dialect of the basic programming language used in Commodore International's 8-bit home computer line, stretching from the Pet of 1977 
to the Commodore 128 of 1985. Sidebar, in the 1990s is when the Commodore 65 was being developed, the computer that the Mega 65 was based on. The C65, as we know, was never released. Back to Wikipedia. Based on the 6502 Microsoft Basic, it shares many characteristics with other 6502 Basics of the time, such as AppleSoft Basic. And here's a little fun little piece of trivia for you. Per Wikipedia, Commodore licensed Basic for Microsoft in 1977 on a pay once, no royalties basis after Jack Trammell turned down Bill Gates' offer of a $3 per unit fee. And this is the fun part. Trammell told Gates, I'm already married, and he would pay no more than $25,000 for a perpetual license. He got a deal, didn't he? Commodore Basic versions have a very interesting history. I'm not going to cover the changes to each version of Basic, but we'll review the version numbers with you. Commodore released the following versions of Basic on the following devices. The list of devices is not comprehensive. My intent is to try and list the very first device that included that specific version of Basic. If there are errors, please let me know. I'm sure you will, and you know how to do that down below in the comments. And don't forget, I'm using Wikipedia as a reference here. So here are the releases of BASIC and the first machine that it was released on. So version one was for the PET 2001 with that chiclet keyboard, you know, that little square thing that wasn't really a keyboard. Version 2.0 was released on the PET 2001 with the full keyboard. Version four, what happened to version three, was released on the PET CBM 4000, 8000 series and late PET 2001s. So after 4.0, what was released next? That's right, version two. Version two. Version two was a second release of the original version two for the VIC-20 and Commodore 64. The thought was version two was a home version of BASIC, so it's a continuation of the version two for the pet with a full keyboard, and not a professional or business computer BASIC that's found in version four on the pet 4,000, 8,000. So getting you caught up, we've gone from version one, two, four, and two. So the next version, of course, we've missed version three. So sure, no, it's version four plus. Version four plus of BASIC is for the CBM2 or the Commodore Business Machines 2. And there was a B and P series. So after version four, of course, we have the Commodore 116, C16, and plus four. So of course, after version four, we have Commodore version 3.5. What happened to five? Uh, Commodore 3.5 was covered uh, and was uh, released on the C116, the C16, and the plus four. Now I spent a lot of time talking about Commodore Basic on the plus four in my Commodore plus four user's guide series. If you've missed that, you have missed a lot. So if you wanna learn everything you need to know about Commodore version 3.5, go check out those videos, link in you know, the companion blog post. So after version 3.5, which is between two and four, but came after four, then we had the Commodore 128 release. So of course, the release number for that version of BASIC is going to be seven. What were they doing over there at Commodore with basic version numbers? And then that brings us up to the unreleased Commodore C65. And of course, our previous Commodore 128 was version seven. So the C65 version of basic was definitely going to be version 10. Did you see that one coming? So real quickly, once again, here we have our versions, version one, two, to four, to two, to four plus, to 3.5, to 7, to 10. I'm so confused. I don't even know which version of BASIC I'm using now. Oh, and, and before we talk more, of course, we know that version 10 was unreleased for the Commodore C65, but there was another version of BASIC that was unreleased, and this was version 3.6. Now, this one kind of falls in place. This one was for the Commodore LCD computer that was never released. If you want to see the Commodore LCD computer, or this is the first time you're hearing about it, check out a video over on Bill Hurd's channel. So let's jump back into version 10 of BASIC, which is where we are today in 2022. And version 10 of BASIC has been revived by the Mega 65 developer community and is an active development. Commodore BASIC is an active development in 2022. Who would have thought I ever would have said those words? And of course it's going to be available and already is 
for the Mega 65 dev kit, but when the Mega 65 is released, hopefully in April, then this is the version you will receive with your Mega 65. I've been following development, and this caused me to want to try and port a basic program from my previous favorite 8-bit computer, the Commodore 128, to my newest 8-bit obsession, the Mega 65. And the submarine tracking system turned out to be a good first program to convert, as we're going to find. So before we compare the two versions, I'm going to go ahead and just show you my Mega 65 version, or version 10 basic code conversion from version 7. So my goal in the conversion of the programs was to create code that was a line-by-line -line conversion and maintain the same number of lines for both versions. I thought to myself, this will make it easier when I show the two programs side-by-side. -side. So let's run the code and see what it looks like on the Mega 65. So that's pretty good, but you'll notice there are some subtle differences. It, it gets to the intent of the program, but I did have to make some changes to the programming lines of code to make it work effectively on the Mega 65. So now let's go ahead and compare those lines of code between the two versions and really dig into the basic and see what changed. Okay, and as you can see here, we have two versions of basic. Version 7 is on the left and version 10 is on the right. Remember, the version 7 is for the 128, and the version 10 is for the Mega 65. I say that because, you know, that whole basic version numbering thing. So I indent the code to better visualize program loops. And we're going to talk about those loops. We've got an infinite loop, and we've got a nested loop, and you can see that by the indentation of the code. Now, you can't do this on the computers, but I can do this in my display to help you better understand the code. And this program basically has three sections. The first section, lines 10 through 60, configure the graphic screens and set up some colors. Line 70 through 100, draw the submarine tracking system. And then finally, lines 110 through 220, actually track the submarine or create the animation and make the sounds. Okay, let's take a look at each section. I'll present a line number, an explanation of each line, and discuss the differences between the two versions. All right, as I mentioned, the very first thing we do is we configure the graphic screen and set some colors. Line 10 is simply a rim statement, and you all know what rim statements do. They just hold a remark. And in this particular case, all we're doing is adding a remark that lists the title of the program. There's nothing really special to see here. So let's dig into line 20 where we really get busy with basic. Line 20 configures the graphics display and the colors. Version 10 includes a speed command and sets the Mega 65 to run at one megahertz. The speed command has three settings on the Mega 65. One is for one megahertz, three is for three and a half megahertz, and any other number is 40 megahertz. Now I'd recommend you use 40 for clarity. The Mega 65 cannot be throttled to two megahertz to match the speed of the C128, which is unfortunate because we can't do a side-by-side -side comparison exactly. So I chose the one megahertz as the best possible comparison. Line 30 draws a box around the screen. Version seven draws a box around the screen edge. My version 10 uses the line command to connect five line segments and centers the line at the bottom vertically with the text drawn in line 40. Now I did this purely as a style decision. I figured it looked better middle aligned on the text than it did on the bottom. It was just a small change since I wasn't going to use the box command anyway. Now, why didn't I use the box command? Well, because version 10 includes the box command. However, when used with the character command or the C-H-A-R command, there are differences. On version 10, the line remains after the character is drawn. So what we have is the line and the characters on top of the line. Whereas on the C-128 version, it draws the box, puts the character, and then the white space behind the character erases the line underneath. Now, I've already talked about it, but line 40 uses the C-H-A-R, or character command, to add the words submarine tracking system to the bottom of the display on the graphic screen. The character is used in lieu of the print command. The version 7 character command sets the color, the X and Y start coordinates, and then the text to draw. 
Version 10 includes many additional options. In our code, 7 is the column of the text, 190 is the row of the text, 1 is the height of the text. For instance, a 2 will double or make that text 16 pixels high as opposed to 8 pixels. The next one, the 1 is a width of text, and again, like the height, if we double it, that'll be 16. Number two is the direction of text. We can set the direction of the text to be up, down, north, east, northwest. We can, any direction we want to do that in those eight directions. And then finally, within the quotations, these are the characters that you're going to display on the graphic screen. So what's that weird number on the end, the dollar sign 29,000? Well, that is the character set. And in this case, if I don't put that number in there, it is going to output those characters in all lowercase. I wanted them to be all uppercase, so I used the dollar sign 29,000. Now there are some other codes that you can put at the end, and you can find those in the Mega 65 book. So with the box drawn and the character text, what's the next thing? Well, line 50, the color command changes the color of the next object drawn to red. Version 10 uses the pen command and a value of two sets it to red. And so there's a little difference between the color codes, but definitely a difference between the commands, color versus pen. In line 60, you're gonna see a variable. This line establishes a radius variable or variables. Version seven creates an X and R while version 10 uses a single XR variable. Now, why is that? Well, we will discuss that difference a little bit later when we talk about the use of the circle command. All right, we've configured the graphic screens and set the colors. The next thing that we need to do is draw the submarine tracking system. And we're gonna do that by drawing some concentric circles on the screen. And we do that with a do loop. So let's look at line 70. Do loops a line or lines of code until it encounters the loop command and an optional condition. In this case, this do references the loop in line 100, which we'll discuss later. Line 80, the circle command draws a circle using the radius specified in line 60. Remember that line? There's a significant difference in the circle command between version 7 and version 10. Version 10 includes a streamlined version because unlike version 7, there is no ellipse command. The version 7 circle command does double duty you must specify both vertical and horizontal circular values, and you include a color value. Version 10 asks for just a few things, a center, a radius, and an optional solid or not solid parameter. Now I need to make a special note here because one of the first things you probably noticed when the code was run is how those circles were drawn. The circle command is drawn differently between version seven and version 10. If you watch the version seven program, you notice the circle is drawn from end to end. Version 10 draws each quadrant of the circle at the same time. This was inherent in the C65 version of BASIC per the developers and was done to maximize the efficiency of the CPU when drawing the circle. This does, however, not allow the two versions of the program to operate in the same way. Now I could draw circles end to end using some replacement code. However, that was not the point of this project. So continuing on with our lines of code, line 90, a value of 10 is added to XR and YR for the version seven and XR for version 10. Once again, this is due to the version seven requiring values for the horizontal and vertical radius by the circle command. In line 100, we have a loop. This loop ensures lines 80 and 90 continue until eight concentric circles are drawn when the value of XR is equal to 90. Then it proceeds to line 110. Okay, with the submarine tracking system drawn, now let's track a submarine. This program's tracking is pretty rudimentary. With the submarine moving from the center to the bottom of the screen and then starts over from the center. However, the 8-bit representation is fun and there's potential to add more to the code to make it even more fun. Now, one of the things that you may have already noticed is that my Mega 65 code makes the sonar blip larger than the original C128 code. It's much easier to spot a submarine that way. Okay, let's start tracking subs with line 110. Line 110 begins with a do command. 
The do command is the beginning of an infinite loop or a loop that continues until it meets the loop conditions in line 220 for version 7 or 210 for version 10. Since there is no condition in that loop command, this program will continue until you press the run stop key. And that's what we mean by an infinite loop. It just keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Now moving on to line 120, similar to line 60, this line sets the radius variable to either zero for version seven or 10 for version 10. The version 10 circle will not allow a value of zero for the radius in lines 170 and 180. It throws errors if you try and do that. Now moving on to line 130, by now we know the do command begins a loop. However, this loop is within a loop and as I mentioned in line 110 becomes what we call a nested loop or a loop within a loop. This do command continues until it meets the conditions of the loop command in line 210 for version seven or 200 for version 10. And that condition is does XR equal 90? When this condition is met, the nested loop exits and the infinite loop at line 110 restarts. Because version seven and version 10 use graphics mode and the circle command differently to animate the sonar, the program lines do not match up in the next loop. And so that's where we have a disparity in the number of lines of code between both versions. I couldn't keep it consistent. Well, I could have, but I would have had to do some things that I think would have muddied up the code. So it was a decision on my part not to completely match line for line. Okay, so to start the animation, we begin at line 140. It draws a filled black circle with a radius of four, which erases the previous filled red circle. And that becomes the blip that's tracking the submarine. Moving on to line 150, combined with line 140 above, the two lines are similar to the V7 line 160, which uses the version seven draw command, which is not available in version 10. And it quickly draws a pixel size blip in white and then black on, that makes it go on and off. And if you look at the animation, you see it's very hard to see and it's very quick because it's immediate, it's on and off. So it's a very quick blip. If you blink, you're gonna miss it. Now on the Mega 65 or V10 version, in lieu of the draw command, I use a filled circle with a radius of four pixels, which represents the submarine and is much easier for us to see. So line 60 is a little bit of fun. Line 60 sounds or pings the sonar when the submarine is draw, similar to version seven line 180, and they're very similar. We even use the same frequency value. 170 draws a black circle over the red circle to erase the sonar circle. 180 draws a red circle over the empty area to redraw the sonar circle. It's similar to version seven in line 190. Now in line 200 on version seven and 190 on version 10, confused yet, add 10 to XR to jump to the next southern ring in the sonar circle. In line 210 on version seven and 200 in version 10, as stated in line 130, it checks the condition of X XR for a value of 90. When this value is reached, it exits the nested loop. All right, we're getting to the end in lines 220 for version seven and 210 for version 10. As stated in line 110, this is the loop command. It has no conditions to terminate the loop. Therefore, we are in an infinite loop. It will just continue to do that loop and the nested loop inside until we press the run stop key. And that's the whole program code in a nutshell. Now, when all is said and done, we're probably interested in the size comparison of the two programs. Version 10 is shorter than the version seven code. The V10 or version 10 code is 468 characters with spaces and 397 without spaces. Now the version seven code is 809 with spaces and 687 characters without. So what does that mean? Well, that means there's a 40% difference between the code between version 10 and version seven. You are going to save 40% of your keystrokes and, and we need to save every keystroke we can when typing in basic programs, let's face it. So after the conversion from the C128 to the Mega 65, I was a bit curious. Could I convert the program quickly using the Mega 65 high resolution screen? And the answer after an exercise in doubling values was you betcha. So along the way, I made a few adjustments to the code. 
First of all, I converted to the 640 by 400 resolution graphic screen that's available on the Mega 65. Now there is a high res mode on the C128, but there's some differences between the two that we won't cover in this video. I also decided to use the speed command, which is unique to the Mega 65, to make things, well, speedier. I also used the sleep command between submarine pings for a more consistent ping interval. So what does it look like? Let's take a look. The other thing it does is you don't see those circles drawn anymore. The basic is so fast it can almost instantaneously draw those circles, which really shows you the power of running a basic program at 40 megahertz. Yes, it doesn't give us that same effect where the original versions are drawing the circles, but I kind of like what I got out of this version with speed at 40. Now, most of the other code is exactly the same. So if you just want to look through the code to see what's changed and what I doubled, go ahead and take a look at that at your leisure. Now, there's a whole lot more that we could have done with this code. I'll just tell you, I had my brain was going with all kinds of ideas. I did capture a few of those that I thought were just kind of something for us to think about. Now, as I mentioned, we could have used speed 40 for the version 10 code just to do everything all at once and immediately draw that screen. That's how fast the basic is at 40 megahertz. I also mentioned that we could have used a mathematical formula to draw the circle from end to end and simulate that more like it is on the C128. We can do that with the Mega 65. We just can't use the circle command to do it. We would have to plot that circle point by point. That's going to eat up some serious cycles. But would it make a difference at 40 megahertz? Probably not. But if you decide to use it in a game program in basic, then those cycles could matter. I'd like to modify the ping sound to be more like a real actual sonar ping. I get that what we have now is not as close. It should be a deeper, more guttural ping, like uh, like this example. Now this is a fun one and one I would really like to try. Use a Sprite as the animation and make the sprite look like a little mini submarine and have it move up from circle to circle. And this would be easy because version 10 includes sprite commands, something I think I might just have to try. And then finally, if you really want to add some realism to this, give some randomness to the plotting of the points. Right now, the, the blips are just going straight up or in the previous version, straight down. Hey, what ideas do you have to make this code better? You know what you can do is you can post them down in the comments below and hey while you're down there in those comments below hit that like hit that thumbs up hit all that stuff do all that stuff down there so that i know that you found this video interesting oh and if you really found it interesting there's another little button down there called thanks send me a thanks i'd love to love to hear from you okay so just a few parting thoughts as we end this video First of all, converting the program was a blast and really brought back those memories from my early Commodore VIC-20 days, hacking around and troubleshooting in basic program. I don't know why, there's just something comforting about typing in basic programs until you have an error, of course, and then you just want to pull your hair out. Pull your hair out. What hair do I have to pull out? The thing that I loved about this conversion, though, was it taught me so much more about the Mega 65. It taught me things that I didn't know. Of course, it taught me basic, right? But it also taught me those things about using speed to modify the lines of code, the execution or the speed of the execution so that things appear almost instantaneous or I can slow them down for differing effects. I thought that was really interesting. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure there are many other ways to create this program. You probably are looking at this. Those of you who have been programming in basic for a long time are probably looking at this and saying, Oh, retro combs, you could have done this. Oh, you could have done that. Oh, you could have done that. Remember, I was converting from a C128, trying to do a line by line of the Mega 65. And yes, I did do some optimizations, but I know that you have optimizations that would make this even better. I'd love to see, love to hear those in the comments below. Or check us out over at the Discord, the Mega 65 Discord under the channel code and join us there. And lastly, now that I have a background in basic programming conversions, I plan to do some others. I don't know if I'll do full videos, but there are some other programs that I've been collecting as I 
look at old magazines. And I think, man, I'd love to try and convert that to the Mega 65 and convert that from version four to 3.5, 3.6, whatever version of basic to the Mega 65 so that we have this nice collection of basic software. If anybody else out there is thinking about doing that, I'd love to hear from you, let me know. And of course you can keep up with all of that software that I convert, all the projects that I have by not only watching the channel, but be sure and check out my blog at www.retrocombs.com or same website, just at stephencombs.com. All right, that concludes this video where I convert a C128 program I found in the Commodore 128 programmer's reference called the Submarine Tracking System to the Mega 65 or a conversion from basic version seven to version 10. It was a blast. I really enjoyed it. Thank you all for joining me. We'll see you next time on Retrocombs. Retrocombs out.